What's up, Doombots? Tony Scunjili here with Nope or Dope, the series where we look at new characters and determine whether they're worth your hard-earned money or resources or not. Today we're going to talk about Echo. So Echo just got added to the game. Echo's a super cool character, kind of like a Taskmaster Light. Some interesting heritage stuff going on with her. Very minor character from the comics. Very minor character from the Hawkeye series she was in, but she has Tanfas, and anyone with Tanfas always gets a win in my book. Uh, she is a hero global skill, brawler, and new young Avenger, part of the war defense team. Now, as you can see, I don't have her yet. You're going to see that a lot, especially with characters like Brother Voodoo and Kate Bishop as these videos come out, because I don't want to make that decision for you, for the most part. I want you to make the decision after I present the information. But... Since I don't have her unlocked, and I'm not going to have other characters unlocked, we have to find a way to look at her stats and where she's going to be useful. And the best way we're going to do that is msf.gg. So we're going to take a quick look at the site, the website, of course, msf.gg. Don't need to put a link in the script. Really helpful for looking at characters, how to build them, what they look like. So I generally speaking, when I look at characters, I try to look at them what I consider to be a reasonable investment. Now, what's reasonable to you might be different than me. Uh, this might be too high or too low to some people. I don't think it's unreasonable to imagine a character at 5 star for red, especially if you're willing to spend quite a bit of money. I don't think it's unreasonable to imagine getting a character to gear tier 14, because honestly, most of the game, especially in the end game parts, come to that point anyway. So looking at her stats at this level, you could see it all here, giving her the striker ISO for her team. 5 stars, 4 red, about 100k power is kind of what I shoot for in this. We see some decent health, especially with the way her team works out. Pretty decent damage. You can always kind of track the difference as you calculate a big jump between gear tier like 12 and 14 and anything like that. Pretty, pretty big differences as you move along. So we'll just keep her here. You can check this out for details on what you're, you should expect from your character as you go on. But this is kind of how I expect to build the character. The stats aren't particularly insane, but when, you know, working together on war defense with the rest of her team, they'll probably balance out a little bit more. She doesn't seem to have amazing stats. She has pretty average for the most recent 20 or so character stats, a little bit below some of the better characters, but all in all, pretty decent stats overall. So let's take a quick look at her abilities determine going backward what makes the most sense. Now I'm going to bring every ability down to six so we can see everything we need to see. First, we'll start with the passive. On spawn, defense up to her and all Young Avengers allies. Great. Works for her outside of the team. Works with everybody with the team. Good. Enemy attacks any Young Avenger ally, which is not her. She counters that person. Very similar to, and if you check, it's almost exactly the same as... Ghost Spider, Spider Gwen's kit. Uh, that nice little counter attack that you see uh, in raids. She now has it for war defense and, of course, for war offense and for, you know, the other game modes you use the Young Avengers in, like uh, none. If this character does not have blind, reduce enemy assist chance by 100. So that's kind of her thing. Uh, she has significantly higher accuracy 150. Blind reduces your accuracy by 100%. All that means is when she's blinded, she still has a 50% chance of hitting. Some characters like Wasp, I think, has a 10% chance. <sighs> Coin flip as to whether or not she hits if she's blind. But if she is blind, your enemies can't assist if she's... Uh, or if she's not blind. That's it. On blind, gain slow. So blind really messes her up. She can't see. She definitely can't hear. Bad days for her. Kind of a cool flavor style build on the character. Even though it might not necessarily be the most uh, exciting mechanics in the game. Feels good for the flavor. Uh, gain 10% damage if this character has any skill enemies. Gain 10% damage uh, no matter what. And then 10% to the Young Avengers. With that, tier 4, the... Uh, Counter attack that she does, get 100 damage, and then all of these numbers go to 25, from 10 to 25. Cool. Sounds great. Great passive on this character. Really, most passives do kind of bind together a team, and it's pretty okay. So, as far as what she needs to do in war, 
it's a good passive. Moving into the ultimate, it's uh, 490 energy. You can see right above me by the dots. Attack primary target for eh, 230 to 300, depending on tier 4 damage. Rebound chain to 4 to 6, that go or 3 to 4, up to 4 to 6 with tier 4s. Slight increase in damage for them. Apply slow to any of the adjacent targets for two turns. If the target does not have slow, reduce that character speed bar by 25%. Seems cool. Granted, it's, like I said, seven energy. It's not ready on turn one. It's not ready on turn two. So make sure with some energy that might be flowing around from one thing or another that could balance it out, like a Ms. Marvel ultimate or something along those lines, but I'm not really counting on it. So it's supposed to be a big, dumb, single target attack that just happens to mess everybody up and then do some other cool stuff. This attack cannot be blocked or dodged, can be missed if she's blind, but she does have that 50% chance. So pretty cool, not necessarily the best value out of a tier four, but it is a ton of damage. You're not using it too often. This alone kind of removes her from the quality of what you'd expect or like a raid character or uh, something like that. It's really for that short-term war. And maybe in some smaller, lower powered, this ability alone might give you something from a uh, an arena perspective or maybe some future game mode like Grand Tournament. But again, mm, not really there too much. Cost too much doesn't feel like... Like Kestrel's ultimate is a single target nuke that's like four energy, you know? Icarus's ultimate kills everybody twice, and it's like, you know, it just doesn't feel great. So it really is that war defense ability uh, that makes sense. Attack primary target for some damage, chain to within two previous spaces. So that's a jumping chain. She's just going all around, kind of like the throne chains you, you see from characters like Captain America's shield and Thor's hammer. Uh, this attack has a 25% extra crit chance, giving her a little bit of value with Raider uh, as an ISO if you are to try to use her like that. I still think for the way the Young Avengers team works, you're going to want Skirmisher on pretty much everybody, but we'll see. Uh, apply Evade to self and all Young Avengers allies. Great. On War Defense, this targets the most injured enemy, ignoring Taunt. Very Deadpool's special kind of attack, but again... It is a five energy attack. So on war defense, you can plan for it to happen immediately on turn one. Outside of war defense, if you're trying to use this attack, you're not gonna get much out of it other than just some decent damage. And then going to tier four ups the damage amount by a reasonable, so you already saw our damage number, 24,000 at moderate investment. Pretty be okay, moderate to high. Uh, then we have the basic. Basic's actually pretty cool. Attack primary target. Then bonus attack, always, for a little bit more. This attack has extra crit chance, blah, 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 blah. Now, her crits don't really do anything as far as she's concerned. So, taking a quick look at her kit, looking at what her power level looks at, we can go down even a little bit lower to, like, 4-4 four, four, uh, to be a little bit more reasonable. Let's give her, you know, level 4 ISO greens, just to tone it down a little bit more at about 80k the health doesn't matter too much for what she's doing especially because of the passives of the rest of the team that's bringing her up her damage takes a big hit but again the abilities do increase it quite a bit especially in, in some other game modes so she's not bad in war she really is good in war uh on war defense and it's because of that that we're probably gonna stick with a no bonnet now i always like to say and you're gonna hear me say it forever in these videos the most beautiful thing about war defense characters are the very few characters in the game that you have complete and total options on if a character is phenomenal in raids you don't really have the option of not working on them especially the way the game has been designed lately you can't not use the Secret Avengers. Sure, you can ignore them, dread it, run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. For raids, for arena, even for war offense, you really can't quite ignore the characters that long. But with war defense, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air for your resources. 
If you are in an alliance that happens to care incredibly greatly about war, so much so that having a strong defense team is going to make or break the difference. Kind of the same from the previous video with T'Challa, except that was more offensive oriented. She's a great, she's a great investment. You know, you're going to be strong. You're going to get a couple more defense wins. It's really going to make the difference in that, you know, two or three hour window at the start of a war where you're racing to a full clear. If you're not that engaged in war, if that's not that important to you, you want to see a little bit more out of her, right? You want to see, okay, maybe you'll get her, maybe you'll unlock her. You'll get her to three stars or something like that. You'll put, you know, a handful of gear pieces in her. You'll get her up to final purple, maybe even 13 slash 14, somewhere in that range. You want to know where else you're going to get value out of her. And the interesting thing about it is you're probably not now i don't think she based on her kit gives much in terms of like doom raids you know the skill raids in doom and based on the fact that she's a global character she doesn't really add much value to your dark dimension pool she her abilities cost too much and they don't do enough outside of their specific designed game mode that said if you're already going to invest in her you might see a little bit of value it's not like a complete waste of time but it's kind of in the same conversation of t'challa if you're already going to invest in the character try them out see if they help you out but don't invest in the character with the intent of being better at a specific raid node or in dark dimension unfortunately echo just doesn't have that so if you want her uh, pretty reasonably. You know, I always recommend you unlock every character that you can. It shouldn't be too hard in general, especially the way most events work. You should unlock the characters, unless they're Blitz released, as we know. But it's after that. You can take your time. That's my recommendation. Not ignore her, not throw her in the dumpster. Just unlock her, and then don't really spend the skill resources on her right now. As long as she's on defense in war, as long as you have her, the team's gonna be okay. And if you really need that team to start getting war defense wins, then you can make your decision. But until that point, I think you don't gotta worry about buying any offers if you don't, you know, if you're not afraid you're gonna unlock her. I don't think you have to worry about farming up her mini unique, which I believe is unstable cloth. I, you know, just use what you got, take your time and relax. That's my official opinion on her. Uh, tune in next time for Kate Bishop, which uh, might be a little bit different. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I will catch you later.